Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring the Weird Frontiers role-playing game. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this dungeon crawl classic style Weird West RPG, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the rules of magic. There are several character classes in the Weird Frontiers game that use arcane energies to cast spells, brew magical elixirs, and even invent wondrous contraptions fueled by the unbridled passion of their creators. Though several variations of the arcane exist, the means to determine successful attempts to channel them are handled similarly. A standard d20 is used and modified by class-related factors. You use a chart and cross-reference the class to determine the type of magic used, including any modifiers. Remember that lock points may be spent at any point to increase the result of arcane checks on a one-to-one -one basis. For example, in the case of the Bedlamite, that class constructs devices and fuels them by force of will. So the gear check, or the check that you are carrying out using that class, is a d20 plus intelligence modifier plus level. But in the case of the Calavera, which uses spell-like abilities learned from the Restless Dead wandering the spirit wastes, it is a spirit craft check. This is d20 plus personality modifier plus level. Each use typically expands temporary personality points. So it all depends on the class. Each arcane using class has different requirements for how their effects are brought into existence. Unless modified by a specific spell description or from a spell's mercurial effects, occultists must be able to speak and have at least one hand free, and some spells require certain physical components. Revelators must be able to speak and brandish a holy symbol or sacred book unless an effect states otherwise. Bedlamites and mountbanks simply need to touch their creations or potions to energize them. There are several means of discovering and adding to a character's repertoire of arcane powers, limited by only their judge's imagination. Spells can be researched, discovered in forgotten grimoires of long-dead wizards, or perhaps etched on the walls of a forgotten cave. Miracles are of course granted by the divine to worthy followers. Formulae and contraptions are found in the pages of inventors' notebooks. Self-discovery through laborious hours of experimentation, or even cleverly disguised within published books if one knows how to read between the lines. Now, one of the few positive changes the Seven Days of Night brought about was the re-emergence of long-dormant ley lines. Ley lines greet the earth in a web of constant fluctuating arcane energies that pulse at random times and with varying intensities. These pulses are what leads to the birth of the classes found in Weird Frontiers. Judges may wish to allow a random ley line to be active in the area that offers a bonus of plus one die to any arcane check at the expense of added time. At a minimum, add one turn to the casting and potentially up to an hour. Any class that rolls for spell-like effects may take advantage of this. Typically, classes that cast spells or use arcane abilities that mimic spells only lose them when the check for success determines a lost result on the chart for the spell or arcane ability in question. Spells typically return within 24 hours after they were lost, unless temporarily brought back by spell burning. Unless specifically stated in the description for the spell, the contraption, elixir, ability, etc. in question, all powers will return within 24 hours. A perfunctory review of the spell from whatever passes for the caster's tome or journal is typical but not required. And depending on the spell medium, there are further nuances. For example, a formula could cause a mutagenic reaction, while a wondrous contraption could have disastrous side effects. Whatever the case or effect may be, each class carries his or her spells in different compartments or mediums. You could store them in books, scrolls, perhaps in notebooks or files. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to take a look at the different corruption effects depending on the class and other class-specific intricacies. 
I like how, despite having general rules for magic, each class feels unique in the way that they transport their spells, the different effects, the energies of the ley lines, and the effects of the seven days of night are quite prevalent. And even characters belonging to the same class could be quite particular in their spell activities. Maybe one carries spells in journals, perhaps the formula and different magical verses and paragraphs are disguised as more mundane happenings in a journal. But maybe another character of that same class stores his spells, his magical research, by carrying small clay tablets edged with strange symbols. Thank you for watching this part of the review, and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you. And see you later.